And we are now in this man's house. Tom Herman, head coach, Texas football. First time on the Longhorn Network set. Just be a little careful. I know you're an excitable guy. This tabletop will break. It okay. Moves. <laughs> it moves. Yeah, right. I'm, okay. I'll be, no I'll be gentle. Weather. I'll be gentle. Because <laughs> I know, I mean, you guys got a little excited today, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Fun day very, for you guys? Very excited. Very fun. Uh, exciting to know that this is the uh, – first signing class, you know, of, of our era, of, of this coaching staff's era here at the University of Texas. And so uh, it is, it's it's exciting. And, and just to know the quality of, of guys that, that we brought in that signed with the University of Texas is uh, uh, exciting for the future. And you're a details guy. I mean, everything is calculated. It's precise. You did a lot of research into what makes one of these transitional classes, as you call it, special and unique. With that said, how did you approach this specific class, year number one? Yeah, well, it was very um, calculated, as you said, and, and very specific in that uh, we knew through all the metrics, all the analytics, all the numbers that point to most of the time in years of transition of coaching staffs, that signing class has the highest rate of attrition, meaning kids that quit, has the highest rate of off-field issues, academic, drug, social, and it has the highest rate of guys that can't play and, and don't ever see the field. And I even went back to, to check, and when we took over at Ohio State in 2012, uh, we, had, we signed 19 guys, and it was considered the fifth-ranked recruiting class in the country. And I went back five years later, uh, looking back at it, there was the, only three of those 19 have played significant time for Ohio crazy. State. And that so is. I, it is crazy. And I didn't want to fall in the same trap. You know, Coach Brown's uh, first class, there was one NFL draft pick, less than half were uh, even started more than one year in, in Coach Brown's uh, first class. So I, I think you wanted to, to, we wanted to make sure that we weren't just chasing stars. We weren't just trying to grab guys just because the recruiting sites said that these were good players, but that we really knew these these young men and we knew what they were about and we knew that they would fit in our culture. Uh, and again, we, we, we don't sign backups at the University <laughs> yeah. of Texas. None of these guys were signed for depth or for anything other than we believe that they can either play now and help us win championships or be – uh, developed into playing for us in the near future to help us win championships. And uh, so a lot of effort was put into the evaluation process, regardless of, of what some of the so-called experts might think. Coach, as we move to the offensive side of the ball specifically, how would you say this class addressed your needs on that side of the ball? Well, it, surprisingly, we, we got two offensive linemen uh, needed tackle bodies because of – uh, they've done a really good job recruiting offensive linemen here in the past, uh, but a lot of those guys are, are bigger, thicker inside guys, and uh, we need some some length at, at that position, and I think we addressed that with Sam and uh, and then with, with Kerstetter being able to p probably play all five positions uh, on the offensive line. He's a, you know, uh, Army All-American, so on and so forth. Uh, we addressed the, the need at, at depth at tailback with uh, Deontay leaving, we knew that we had to sign uh, one, if not two, tailbacks, and we got Tennille Carter uh, a late. You know, he was an early enrollee, and I mean, we we that was a you want to talk about a shotgun marriage, <laughs> uh, but he uh, he knew us from our our time in Houston and those relationships that we had forged with him, and so, and then who I think might be the steal of the class, maybe the steal in the country is. Uh, uh, Daniel Young as well, you know, two different backs with Tennille being more of a speed guy and Daniel being more of a power guy and then uh, some athleticism out wide and then we really had a numbers problem at, at tight end in terms of uh, I, I think we've only got one healthy scholarship wow. tight end that'll go through uh, spring practice. So uh, we needed two guys, again, two different guys with Cade being a very athletic guy that yeah. can split out and play in the slot and do some things, uh, you know, kind of like a, a receiver or hybrid. And Reese may be more ready to play right now because of, of his physical strength and size. So really excited about the where we fit those pieces of the puzzle in. Now, Coach, the last month you've had to praise these kids, tell them they're the best player you've ever <laughs> seen. Now you got to humble them. How do you make that transition, right? It's really easy. Uh, it is, uh, yeah, it's, 
It started today, to be honest with you. I called them, uh, or their coaches got them on the phone with me, the position coaches, and I literally said to them, hey, enjoy the day, your workout's in the mail, get your butt to work uh, tomorrow. If you want to have any, if you have any dreams of playing as a freshman, you need to make sure when you get here on June 1st, you are in the best shape as humanly possible, and that requires a whole lot of work, and you know, some of the kids were like, oh, can't we celebrate? No, we don't celebrate <laughs> no. very much around here. Go enjoy your night with your family or whatever, and then it, it's time to get to work. Yeah. You have a well-documented resume of developing quarterbacks. I'm looking forward to, to seeing you work with Bouchelle and Ellinger. Um, speaking of that, what, how would you say that Sam, when you watch him on film, what stands out about this recruit? Well, his junior year, he was the state player of the year, Gatorade state player of the year. Obviously, his senior year, as most people know, was hampered very much by, by injury and so I think two things that really don't stand out on film that are the most impressive to me and one is that he is he's the an alpha male a great leader he's very mature for his age uh, due to some unfortunate circumstances that happened in his life uh, had to grow up very quickly and so that is very impressive to me and then the fact here's a kid that had been committed to the University of Texas he tears his meniscus in week one anybody and everybody could have just shut it down and said I'm done my senior year's over I'll wait till I get to Texas four weeks later he's out on the field battling with his team two you know he plays two games breaks his thumb and then you say okay you got a scholarship to Texas Sam well, you're good just shut it down senior year's over five weeks later he's back in the playoffs wow playing with his team, and then breaks his hand uh, in the second round of the playoffs. So you want to talk about wow. uh, an impressive teammate to me, the fact that he didn't have to do any of that. He had already secured his scholarship at the University of Texas, could have spent that time rehabbing, getting better, whatever, but he wanted to give everything he had for his high school team. Just want to follow up on Daniel Young real quick. As you mentioned, could be the sleeper, the underrated guy of this class. Why do you think that is? Well, he comes from a great program at Westfield High School, uh, a winning program that has uh, developed great college players over the year. But I think also Danny's a guy that has really just scratched the surface in terms of his potential because as a sophomore, he played linebacker. Mm -hmm. And then as a junior, they moved him to tailback because they needed help there. And so he was just learning the position. And as you know, nowadays, a lot of these kids get recruited and ranked off of their junior film. And then you want to talk about a kid that had an unbelievable senior year carrying the football. The guy just keeps getting better in terms of learning how to play the position of running back. He's only played it for two years. And his junior year being that first one and, and really – saw a market improvement as a, as a senior. And as you know already, University of Texas, the Texas fans, they love themselves some running back. No doubt. <laughs> Got plenty here yep. in Austin, Texas. A lot more to come when we return. We'll talk about the Texas defense. Coach Orlando has got himself some players. We'll break them down when we return. Congratulations again, buddy. Enjoy, enjoy the day. Bimage, it's Coach Herman. Congratulations. Samuel Cosby. You got a chance to be part of something very, very special, and uh, you've earned it. All right, brother? Taquan Graham. It's Coach Herman. Congratulations. I am pumped up about you and what you can do for us. And like I said before, it, the future's going to be bright with you, man. We get, I'm going to be a mentor to you. Let's go, Sherman. Let's go. Yeah! <laughs> Hi, Damien. Congratulations. Coach, I just got your voicemail. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of phone I, being I crammed up into my face. I, I didn't realize it was it was that money, man. Wow, that's uh, when you put it in a montage like yeah, that, it, it looks a lot worse than it is. <laughs> we got cameras everywhere, right? I mean, we're Longhorn Network. We're no all doubt. Over the place. Yeah. What's it like just sitting there watching you from this perspective? Just like do what you do on a normal signing day. Uh, like I said, I didn't. I didn't realize it was that. <laughs> That much. I, I really, you don't. You're just, you're going and going and going, and you, you just, you never have time to come up for air or slow down. And so, I, you know, it's pretty funny put together like that, yep. and one right after the, uh, the other. I mean, it 
didn't quite happen all that fast, <laughs> so you, uh, you have time to gather your thoughts a little bit. What were you trying to address specifically when you look at these defensive players coming into this class? Needed length on the defensive line for sure, and um, I think we definitely addressed that with uh, Max Cummins as a guy whose recruitment exploded uh, the last few weeks of recruiting in January had had offers from a bunch of Big 12 schools and uh, wanted to be a, a Longhorn and and uh, really address that. And then Taquan Graham, guy that uh, stayed committed, was was committed when we got here and uh, did a phenomenal job uh, of going to see some other places. And, and credit to Coach Giles and Coach Orlando for uh, making sure that that uh, he stayed with his commitment. And then. Jamari Chisholm is a guy that was a captain of his junior college, uh, is almost 300 pounds right now, and so he's ready to play. So that was a big emphasis for us, as well as uh, in the defensive backfield, too, with uh, Josh and Kobe uh, and Montrell to, to be able to solidify some guys in the defensive backfield. Uh, and then with Marquez Bimage, and then uh, obviously Gary Johnson is exactly what this defense needs. He's a um, hard hitting hammerhead inside, but he, he get this, he ran a 10 5 900 meter Ooh. dash in high school at 215 pounds without blocks. He said, coach, I don't, he Why? told his track coach, I don't, I don't feel comfortable getting out of blocks. <laughs> okay. So he ran it, won the state meet at 215 pounds. Uh, I see Marquez wow. Bimage up there. Marquez is a guy that uh, has a knack for pass rush and can get after the quarterback uh, and is a very athletic and, and powerful dude. I like when it came to Graham, how you said other places he was looking at. We'll just yep. leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't comment on <laughs> any other places or other recruits except my own. Other places. I love it. Yep. Spe speaking of, of the mentality of this defense, when you look at Todd Orlando coach defenses, they're aggressive, they're attacking. Um, when you look at the list of players that you've just brought in, who are some of the guys that you say really exemplify what what this defense is really all about? Well, I think Ryan and, and Marquez definitely, or excuse me, Gary and uh, Marquez definitely uh, at the linebacker position. Aggressive, aggressive guys. And, and really, you know, it's hard for me to, to pinpoint one because I think, you know, all of them, there, there's no, like, Sometimes you see a defensive player, oh, well, he, you know, the old saying, looks like Tarzan, plays like yeah. Jane kind of <laughs> yeah. deal. Um, we, we, don't, we don't sign those around here. We want guys that their physicality and aggressiveness pops off the, yep. the, the screen, and that's the first thing we look for is, is a guy a competitor, and then on defense, is he physical and aggressive? And, and you can – then you start worrying about how fast is his 40 time and all that stuff. Coach, on offense, you talk about the tight end, the quarterback. Those have the most pressure on them. Defensively, who has to make the unit go? What position? Uh, probably our field safety and our Mike linebacker. Our field safety kind of uh, sets the call in terms of the form based on the formation or a for formational defense. So he's going to tell you, uh, you know, where the nickel needs to line up, and then the, the linebackers get lined up opposite of that, and uh, and then the Mike linebacker has to communicate the the front and blitz call to the to the defensive line and make sure the defensive line is on the same page. So those two guys uh, have a lot on their plate when it comes to the the mental side of the game. One player specifically to make sure everybody gets the spotlight they are due, Kobe Boyce. I mean, you got a Kobe coming in. I mean, that's a good name to have if you're a playmaker. It, it is a, a great name to have. Uh, we might nickname him the Mamba. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I like it. He does have a uh, fantastic – he's another one that was committed uh, early and uh, with the previous staff and stuck with his commitment. And, again, uh, the ability to shore up the back end and the secondary. Kobe's a guy that, as you saw, can – definitely come up and, and be a force in the run game, much like a, a guy that's sitting to my left, but also <laughs> also can cover and can uh, can return. And uh, is, we're extremely excited to, to have him as part of this class. Now it's time to test out your 40 because you got to go hit your press conference. Ooh, that'll be bad. <laughs> right, good to see you. Coach Herman, thank you so Pleasure, much. Congratulations on the class right, of 2017. You.